With warmer weather, many of you might be finally unpacking that Mini 2 that's been sitting on the shelf for the last month or two and taking it out for its first flight. So look, today what I'm gonna do is a quick rundown on setting it up, understanding the drone, the controller, the app, how to fly and where to fly. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and today I am talking about DJI Mini 2 because it is fast becoming DJI's most popular drone ever and for very good reason frankly. Not only is it more than capable of producing incredible video and pictures, it also now has the greatest freedom on places to fly under the new rules in the UK and Europe. So today what I'm going to do is go through the main points to get the Mini 2 set up and ready to fly as if this is your first drone there's a fair bit to take in. So going through the basics, first off, you have the drone itself and the remote control, which will attach to your phone using the cable supplied. And uh, you'll then use the DJI Fly app, which will show you all the information about what your drone is doing when it's up in the air. You get a battery, which you can charge inside the drone itself. But if you've got the combo version, like I've got here today, you'll actually have three batteries. You'll have two spare batteries, uh, additional batteries rather, and the charging hub, as well as the natty little uh, carry bag. So the first thing to do is to get the battery and the remote charged up. Like I said, the Mini is one of the few DJI drones where you can actually charge the battery inside the drone itself. Battery goes in the back here, it just slides in, nice little clip, put the USB uh, C lead into it, it'll take about an hour to charge up. Alternatively, you can use the uh, charging hub if you've got the combo. Uh, what you can do is put in the USB-C in the side here. You can actually press the little power button briefly there and it'll actually show the charge status, the capacity of each of the batteries. So if they've all got um, four little white lights, you know they're fully charged. And for the remote control, of course, you just uh, plug the USB-C into the base of the remote there. And again, the little indicator lights will flash away until it's fully charged. The individual drone batteries have got a spec max flight time of 31 minutes. Uh, you're in practice, you're only going to get around 25, 26 minutes tops actual flying before the uh, low battery alarms start telling you to return to home. The remote control, on the other hand, he's got quite a chunky little battery inside him. He'll be good for at least three, four, even five flights. So if you do get the combo, you've got three batteries, each 25 minutes flight, plus the remote. So you're going to have well over an hour's time up in the air. So whilst it's charging up, um, unfold the, uh, the legs, take the gimbal guard off and uh, have a little look at the drone itself. Uh, at the front, of course, you have got the uh, camera, which is the main thing of the Mini 2. Uh, it is an incredible uh, little camera considering the size of the drone. Uh, it's going to be shooting 12 megapixel stills and 4K video. Now it's on a little gimbal, which means it will move. And what it's going to do is compensate. So as the drone is uh, moving about and being blown about in the wind, the gimbal will rotate and compensate so that your video stays absolutely uh, smooth as silk. Around the back, next to the uh, USB, you've got the slot where you put your micro SD card in. That's going to capture and record all of the pictures and video that you take. Uh, you, using tweezers is often a good way of getting it in and out. There's no internal memory in the Mini 2, so you do need a micro SD card to record the video and pictures. And just make sure you get a very decent uh, micro SD card. You need a very high write speed, 90 to 100 megabits per second, because writing 4K video produces an awful lot of data. Me, I tend to use a 64 gig card and I keep a spare card in the bag so that when you finally get out there one day and you realize your little micro SD card is still sitting in your computer at home, you won't be stuck. So as I said, spare one in your bag, always a good idea. At the back, I've already said, we've got the battery compartment where you uh, slot the battery uh, in and around the front, you've got a little LED which you can configure in the settings. And at the top, of course, you've got the uh, rotors or the props. Now the way drones actually work two of the props will always go clockwise and the other two uh, opposite will go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise and when you fly and you're controlling the drone these props are always speeding up or slowing down which will vary the tilt or the uh, the pitch of the drone which makes it fly in certain directions quick look at the remote control this is the new design for dji it's almost identical to the mavic air 2 and it's got its own internal battery as i said good for about four or five flights idea is quite simple enough this slides up and clamps your mobile phone in place which you then connect with a little cable and that way it's going to display everything that's happening to your drone whilst you're flying 
joysticks are stored at the bottom here and they just simply pop out and screw in nice and easily. I'm going to go through the main details and controls of this uh, later when we get the drone up in the air but for now uh, very simply these are obviously your control sticks that are going to control the orientation of, uh, of the drone when it's up in flight. You've got the uh, gimbal wheel at the back here which is going to how it lifts the camera uh, up to the horizontal or down to the vertical. Over on the right you've got the shutter button which will start or stop video or take a still picture depending on what mode you're in. Top right you've got the toggle button which will swap between uh, video mode or still pictures and then at the front you've got the power button, the uh, speed control which I'll, I'll go into that later and the uh, automatic return to home. Now before we actually get flying you do need to set the drone up and probably going to have to update the firmware as well. So I would actually do this at home where you've got good internet access. Uh, flying inside generally a bad move I think. It's easy for the drone to drift because it doesn't get a very good GPS lock and uh, it's the quickest way to, to crash as soon as it hits the wall. But uh, what you can do inside of course is turn it on, turn on the remote control and set it all up. Before you do that, it's a good idea just on a computer to go to uh, online to digi.com and register yourself or your email address uh, with them because you're going to need that email address uh, when you actually uh, set up the drone and put it into the Fly app. On that, you do need to download the DJI Fly app uh, either from your app store or directly from dji.com slash downloads. If you're running an Android phone, remember uh, the Fly app needs 64-bit Android, so you may struggle if you've got an older phone. So once that's downloaded, you're ready to fire up the drone and get it all set up. Uh, if you've been charging the batteries in the uh, combo charger, take one out. As I said, battery goes at the back. Uh, just make sure it clicks and then you can click that shut as well. Idea with the remote, very straightforward. You lift the uh, slider out and you're going to put your phone in, make sure the uh, USB connector is at the uh, on the right and then you're just going to hook the connector in like that and of course make sure if you've got any side buttons on your phone not to snag those. Um, make sure you remove the gimbal guard from the drone before you power it up. The gimbal does a little startup procedure and you'll get a gimbal over overload um, which will uh, mess the motor up. Uh, turning it on you need a double tap so it's a short and then a long and you hold it down hold it down until you hear it clicking and then off you go. And the same with the remote control, double tap, so a quick duh, and then a and when you hear the beeps uh, you know that it's powered on. On your phone you want to open up the Fly app, it can take a good 10-20 uh, seconds for the remote to uh, link up with the drone itself and if it's the first time that you've powered up the drone then you're going to be prompted to activate the drone and also enter the email account that you set up with DJI earlier and uh, put that into the Fly app. You'll also almost certainly be prompted to update the firmware. Now to do that you do need good internet access for your phone as it needs to download the firmware package and then upload it to the drone which can take a good five to ten minutes. But once all the updates are complete and you finally get that blue go fly bar Turn off the drone and the remote with the same double press and then head outside to fly. When you're looking for somewhere to fly, choose a nice wide open place, far away from people and trees, where you can land easily if you have to. In the UK, under the new rules, you can actually fly the Mini and the Mini 2 in most places, but you do need to stay away from crowds. But bottom line is, the quieter it is, the better it is, especially if you're getting used to the drone's controls. Make sure you can set the drone down on flat ground or on a wooden table. A metal table is no good, anything metal nearby will mess up the drone's internal compass and it will ask you to recalibrate the compass, which is quite easy to do, but you get bored of doing the uh, merry little dance each time. If it is on the ground, make sure dogs cannot get to it, as they often will go nuts when the props uh, start up and when it actually lifts off. Uh, they can't see the props spinning, they will really hurt their nose or their eyes. Uh, many of you regulars will have seen how Ted goes nuts each time I fire up the drone, which is why I always fire it up from on top of the table. Turn the drone on and the remote as before with a double press, open up the Fly app and take a look at all of the information shown because there is a fair bit which I'm going to cover in full detail in a separate video but for now just to get you flying here are the main points. So the main view is the default live uh, camera view. It's a direct feed from the drone. It will always show you what the drone is actually seeing itself and of course that's crucial for aligning your photos and videos. Along the top of the display is the main status bar because it might be asking you to calibrate the compass which is easy enough to do and it is important so that it doesn't get confused. It's also telling you whether or not it's got good GPS. 
Good GPS is really important as it sets the takeoff point that the drone will automatically return to if the signal gets lost. Over on the top right, you've got various indicators showing the number of satellites, the strength of the signal between the remote and the drone, and then you also have the battery level indicator, which uh, if you tap that when you're flying, it'll expand and it'll show you uh, some remaining flight times. Top right are the three dots that open up the main settings. Now again, there's way more in here than I want to go into detail now, because I just want to go through the basics to get you up flying. But the main settings you do need to check now are the safety settings where you set what the drone should do if it loses signal. Now I should point out that's actually not that likely. The Mini 2 uses a signal system called OcuSync 2.0, which is DJI's best transmission system. And uh, it will normally give you a range of a good few miles, which is far beyond what you can actually legally fly. Most countries, the rules state that you've got to keep the drone in visual line of sight, which generally means you can only fly between three and 500 meters away tops. But if you fly around the back of a house or a hill, not only can you not see the drone, but the drone has no longer got a direct line of sight to the remote, and that's where signal dropouts can happen. So the idea of the safety settings is to set a limit on your flight and tell it what to do if it does lose signal. You want to set the maximum altitude to around 80 to 100 meters. The legal maximum is 120 meters or 400 feet, and it is actually a criminal offense to fly any higher than that. In truth though, the world I think looks pretty much the same anywhere above uh, 60, 70 meters high. And uh, to be honest, the wind is a lot stronger up there. So my advice, set it to about 80, 100 meters max. Max distance is also uh, something else you need to set. The, maybe set it to around 500 meters. This is generally what the rules consider to be the furthest you can see a drone. Although with the Mini, it's probably a little bit shorter than that. And then finally, you've got the return to home settings. Uh, the default is set to automatically return to home in case of signal loss. And personally, I would leave it at that rather than hover. And I definitely wouldn't take the option of automatically landing because that would be an uncontrolled landing. But the return to home height is the important setting here as this is how high the drone will rise up to before it then starts making that direct uh, flight straight back to the home point. So make sure that the return to home height is higher than the highest tree or building around you. But you don't have to set it needlessly high. But in saying that, quite often as the drone rises up, it may well re-establish uh, the radio link and you'll be able to regain control. So for me, I think setting it around 40 to 50 meters is about right. By all means, have a little poke around with the rest of the settings here, but I will be putting out a separate video on making more use of these. But for now, uh, let's jump out and check the camera settings on the right. Here you set whether or not you're taking still photos or video. Have a poke around, but again, I want to go through the full options and settings in another more detailed camera settings video. But for now, you can just choose whether or not you're going to be filming video or taking stills. When you're flying, you can also swap between video and stills by pressing that toggle button on the top right on the remote, as I said earlier. Bottom right are the auto or manual camera settings, which again, I will go through in that more detailed camera settings video. But for now, you can just leave them on auto. And then traveling along the bottom left, you've got the height and distance display and the respective speeds. You can change these between metric or imperial in the settings. These are a fairly crucial part of the display to keep an eye on. And then over on the left of them, in the left hand corner, is the map. I'm not really sure why DJI hide this away so much, because it is such a useful part of the display. If you tap it to expand it out, then you will see the directional arrows and lines to work out exactly where your drone is relative to yourself, and which way it's actually pointing. So this is a key point. If you ever lose track of where the drone is, tap the map, look at the display, rotate the drone back towards you, and then you can always tap it again to revert back to normal camera view. And then finally on the left, you've got the auto takeoff button, which when you're up in the air, turns into the auto land. So I guess that is as good a point as any to finally get airborne. You've got two ways of taking off. You can use the automatic uh, takeoff button, or you can just take off manually. Um, for the automatic takeoff, you're just gonna tap that takeoff button on the left-hand side, then you press and hold, and then you can see the moment you let go, prop start, and then it lifts up. Now, I'll just land and show you the manual way. So again, and the way to manually take off, just as easy, all you're gonna do is move the sticks to the five o'clock and seven o'clock position, 
You hear the props uh, start up and then you just lift the left stick gently, let go, and there he is. So this is where you want to just get used to uh, what the controls actually do. Uh, they're fairly straightforward. Um, practice is going to be uh, your best friend here basically. So the left stick, if you've left it in the default state, literally the left stick is going to go up and down and if you move it left it rotates it. The, uh, the right stick is positional so basically it will move it forward, it will move it back if you put the stick down and if you move the stick to the right it flies to the right and if you stick to the move, uh, move the stick to the left, it moves to the left. You really need to take a bit of time to get used to these because whilst it's facing away from you, everything makes perfect sense. But the moment you move forward a little bit and then turn the drone to face you, now everything is back to front. And it means that when you move the right stick to the right, it jumps left and when you move the stick to the left it goes right and uh, conversely when you move it forward it comes towards you and backwards. So having these controls swap around when the drone isn't facing away from you is one of the things that's going to really catch you out. So that's one of the things I'd really suggest you, you have a little practice of, especially if you're going to be flying through, uh, through a narrow gap or between trees. So take a little bit of time and say so spin it back around away from you And then what you want to really do is just lift it up and fly away. Now, one of the other immediate tips you're going to see, you can see here I've got very bright sun and I've got a black horizon. So one of the things you're really going to get used to very quickly is reducing the amount of sky you've got in your shot. So the moment you tilt it down to have very little sky, you'll see that the uh, ground comes into play. Like I said, I'll do another video on camera settings and how to handle this in a more controlled manner. But for now, keep the camera dipped down, don't get too much of the sky in, and you should be able to uh, see what you're doing. Now you can see as I'm flying away here, you can see the little counters on the bottom left counting up, how far away I've gone and how high I am. Remember the height is relative to the takeoff point, so if there is a hill going down, uh, it's not going to compensate for the ground. It's only relative to where it took off from. So like I said in the map settings, you can turn the drone around, and when that arrow is lined up with the blue line, you know you're pointing back home. And you can then use the right stick and just start flying change the orientation. Like I said, also if you tap the battery indicator top right, you expand it, you can actually see three different uh, uh, countdown times here. You've got uh, the time until the return to home is going to kick in. You've then got the time until forced landing and you've got the time until the battery is depleted. You don't want to be pushing your battery down to zero, but I did do another video on what happens when the battery goes right down to zero and what automatic uh, return to home protocols are going to kick in. So I'll put a link to that, have a little watch of that so that you don't get caught out when the battery is getting low. And just like takeoff, you've got two ways of landing as well, automatic and manual. You can either press that little uh, land button on the left and then you press and hold the land. And when you let go, it'll automatically start descending. Well, of course you can land manually yourself and to do that all you're going to do is hold that left stick down and again it'll shut down nicely. Now with it back up in the air one of the other last little tricks I'm going to teach you to, uh, to do today is to hand catch because the Mavic Mini is actually one of the easiest drones to catch on your hand. Some of the bigger drones, yeah, they can certainly hurt your fingers if you, uh, if you do them wrong. But if you've got dirty, dusty, uneven uh, ground, or there's long grass, or you've got little animals everywhere, hand catching is actually far easier than you might imagine. All you're gonna do is hold your hand out flat and keep your left stick down, and it will literally just land on your hand. So like I said, make sure you're lined up by it. Hold the left stick down.
keep the hand completely flat and just hold it until the props automatically switch off. Like I said, you're gonna keep your left stick down, it'll land onto your hand, and as long as you hold everything still, after a second or so, the props will shut down. And for me, I normally do hand catch the Mavic Mini because it's such a lightweight little drone and uh, it's got such short little legs that unless you're landing on concrete, uh, the props will often get snagged up. So a bit of a longer video there. Unfortunately, I had a lot to get through, but I just wanted to get through the main basic points for you to set the drone up and to get your Mini 2 up in the air. Um, like I said, I will be putting a couple more videos out very soon, a more detailed one on the camera settings, doing some of the uh, quick shots as well, and also how to get uh, fast, smoother movements so that you're not actually uh, ending up with a video that's all jerky and nasty. So like I said, look out for those in the next uh, week or two, and I'll put links to those up uh, as soon as I uh, get them up. Anyway, look. As ever, I hope you found this useful. Give the video a little thumbs up if you have. It really does always help the cause. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that sub. Ding the dong, get notified each time I put something out. Either way, look, I hope uh, you're enjoying the good weather and looking forward to coming out of lockdown wherever you are. Till next time, you stay safe and sane. Have fun, happy flying.